Hey. <laughs> This is good. I could, I could just use this slide, right? Um, that, what an incredible thank you. That was beautiful. Um, and, and a great lead into what I'm going to talk about. Uh, so uh, I'm Stephanie. I work at Kickstarter. Uh, I do this. I talk to people about Kickstarter. I share a lot of stories about Kickstarter. Um, and uh, I think what we just heard about this concept of ownership and sharing and what we could do for our community, these are all the things that matter the most and everything I'm about to say, so I'm just going to leave. <laughs> you don't need to hear from me. Um, but uh, I'll, So I'm going to hopefully uh, dig a little deeper for you guys. So Kickstarter was founded about five years ago uh, by these three dudes. And I am taking the time to put them on screen for you because I want you to understand where we came from. Uh, that guy in the middle, that's Perry Chen. Uh, the Kickstarter is his brainchild. He's an artist and a musician. Uh, he was living in New Orleans. He wanted to have a concert, and he just didn't have the cash to pull it off. And he was like, God, I wish there was a way that like a bunch of people could pull sort of conceptually a bunch of money together. And if they got enough, then they would do a thing. But if they didn't, they'd be like, oh, it's not a good idea. Kickstarter. Uh, so he held on to that idea. He would meet people along the way. He'd be like, what do you think? People would tell me he's crazy. Eventually, he met Yancey. That's that guy right there. Uh, and Yancey was working um, at eMusic. He was an editor, and he had a small label where he was putting out bands he cared about, and he thought it was a great idea. Uh, and so they began to work together, and then they met Charles. Charles was a designer and had been working in business. And so the three of them really gave birth to what Kickstarter is. And uh, that, all that is still very much at the core of what we do. It's about people with creative ideas who want to bring a community together. Um, so we have three core rules on the site. I'm just showing you the first one. And it is uh, to create something to share with others. This is the number one thing that we expect people to do on Kickstarter. If you want to create something, if you want to share it with others, then it belongs on our site. Uh, I think uh, this is a really important one too, and this is also from like Perry in 2002. Uh, these are things that might not otherwise exist. These are things that, because maybe they're never going to make money, or because only 100 people care about it instead of 10,000 people caring about it, it just would never get off the ground. So this is about a community of people coming together to do something that matters to them and maybe nobody else. Um, and uh, again, this concept of money, this is uh, a lot of people don't make money on Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, I'll, of course, show you some stories that are great and where people did make money, but I'm also going to show you plenty of stories where people are really just like, let's make this thing, uh, which is so key. Uh, so what's kind of amazing, the fact that money doesn't matter is actually <laughs> translated into a lot of money, right? There's power here. And uh, as was mentioned earlier, I come from the nonprofit art world. And so, uh, you know, I'm, it's, in the States, there's no money in the arts. You're constantly, like, scrambling and hustling and trying to find cash to do what you have to do. So when I see these numbers, I am always so happy and so blown away. This is as of yesterday, might be more today, but over 67,000 projects have been funded by 6.8 8 million people from around the world, uh, and over 100, uh, sorry, $1.2 billion have been pledged to these creative projects. Uh, these people have come from nearly every single country in the world. Um, many of them have not pledged to just one project, you know, your cousin's project, or your uncle's project, or your best friend's project, but more than one project. In fact, what is the number currently, and these numbers always change, uh, 236,000 people have pledged to 10 or more projects. This gets us really excited, because what we're seeing emerge on the site is a community of people coming together to bring things to life. This is a true ecosystem. This is not just about people saying, hey, I need your cash. This is about people saying, hey, let's do that. Let's make that happen. Um, and when we hit uh, 5 million backers a few months ago, we did some numbers. We said, who are these people? Where do they come from? What does this all mean? And we learned that 60% of the dollars pledged on the site come from these repeat backers, the people who come maybe for their best friend's project or that thing they care about, and then start discovering and browsing and finding other people to connect with. Uh, so I am going to try to help you understand today who these people are, where they come from, why they care, and 
why they participate. I'm going to tell you these stories from the position of the project creator, because I think you guys are probably a room of very creative people who have lots of ideas. Probably some of you have, I'm sure many of you have given money to projects, whether it's on Kickstarter or elsewhere, and I'm sure some of you have even run your own projects. Um, I'm not going to get tactical with you. I'm not going to say, <laughs> well, I'll say it right now, but I won't get into it, that before you run a Kickstarter project, you, of course, need to know who those people are. You need to show them a model of your house. You need to ask them what are they excited about. You need to invite them in. So by the time you launch your project, you've already built a community of owners. Let's call it that. Um, that. That is some tactical stuff that you should know. Anyone who's ever run a project can tell you that. So if you're thinking about doing it, go and tap someone on the shoulder and say, hey, I heard you did a successful project. Can you tell me how you did that? You'll get that information from them, not from me today. Um, I'm going to share a few different kinds of uh, stories. So the first story is people who made a project for a community. These are people who came to the site with an existing community, a group of people who already knew who they were, cared about them, cared about what they did. Uh, this is one of those great stories. This is a guy named Tim Schaefer, who has a game design studio in San Francisco. His community, for years and years and years, was tapping him on the shoulder and saying, Tim, why don't you make those old school adventure games anymore? And he'd be like, guys, no one pays for those games. They want like first person shooter, I'm sorry. And so finally, he was like, whoa, well, okay, let's do a Kickstarter, let's see. Like, will each of you like pony up 15 bucks and like we'll make this together? And in one day, he hit a million dollars. Um, and by the end, he had raised over $3 million from over 87,000 people. Um, he built a forum where these people could talk about the game, influence the game, learn about the game and development. And they also did a short documentary series that followed the story of the making of the game. Uh, it's, it's, and it's really good. Like, I'm not a games person and it's really good. I also gave Tim money because I was like, Tim, you're cool. So, like, I mean, this is kind of the amazing thing. Uh, uh, a little while later, Veronica Mars uh, was a huge project that broke Tim's record in terms of number of backers, over 91,000 people. And this is the story of Rob Thomas and Kristen Bell. Rob Thomas is the creator of the show, Veronica Mars. Kristen Bell was the star. Um, and they had fans who had been coming to them for years and being like, guys, why don't you bring Veronica Mars back? Make a movie. And they'd be like, Warner Brothers won't let us. They don't think there's any money in it. So lo and behold, they launched this project. Uh, they also, I forget what they raised in that first day. It was like $2 million. It was crazy. But this is like 91,000 people. Um, and I have this, this is a uh, picture from this filming of the, of the movie. Uh, and it was great because they had their backers come out. They got to be extras on set. They get to be a part of it. And there were these signs up all over. Like, this is for the people who made this. So no sharing yet, okay? Um, Amanda Palmer, uh, also incredible fan base, went to her people, said, let's make a record that w the way that we've always wanted to make a record. So uh, starting at a dollar, her backers could download the entire album. And at $5,000, they got together in groups and they organized house parties. And Amanda came and they played dress up and they made music and they stayed up all night and they partied together. Uh, and those were self-organizing groups. So those were groups of people that were like, I don't have $5,000, but I bet between all of us, we could get it together. I have a house. Um, this, uh, some of you may have seen this project. This is uh, an uh, old unreleased record by the Aphex Twin, sort of like appeared on the internet and a community of people got together on a board and was like, uh, what if we did a Kickstarter to buy it? Ha 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 ha. And then someone's like, wait, really? Maybe we could. Maybe we could work something out with the digital rights that if we each pledge money, we could be owners of this. And so there was just one reward here in this project and it was to be to download the full lossless, like the whole high quality album and they could own it. Now someone does own the vinyl record, like that's that person's, but these people, this community of 4,116 people now have the digital album. Molly, who's here, and you guys I think all saw uh, speak, or many of you probably did, uh, yesterday. She's a great example of someone who's actually come to the site three times, uh, and she has her own community that she brings with her every time. Um, this, is, she's, this is not her most recent project or her most, like, most money project, but this is my favorite project of hers. For her 28th birthday, she wanted to lock herself in a room, draw all over the walls. <laughs> like, that was it. That was the proposal. Um, and this is, a, this is a screen grab from her project. It's like, why should you give me money to lock myself in a room and draw all over the walls for my birthday? Um, and she talks about 
um, what it would be to participate in this, um, of course, what the money will go to, and then what you'll get in exchange. So uh, people got, anyone who pledged got different sized pieces of paper created uh, for, of the drawing that was created and got to participate in a live stream, suggest ideas for drawings, ask her questions as she went. So even though they couldn't be in the room, some of them could, at the $1,000 level, um, I think you could be in the room with Molly. <laughs> Um, but then there's plenty of people, people like me probably, who don't have a community. So come to the site to build a community. Uh, this is a guy, Jed, who, this is one of the most funded art projects on Kickstarter of all time. And when it launched, I was like, whoa, who is this dude? And why are all these people giving, them, uh, giving him their money? And so I actually emailed him. And I was like, Jed, tell me your secrets. And it turned out that six months before he launched this project, he started sharing his art online in forums and community boards. Um, just getting people really excited about what he's up to, collecting those people on a Facebook fan page, and then when he launched his project, he was like, a week before, he's like, guys, it's coming. You can have this <laughs> if, you, if you just stay tuned. And so as soon as he launched, these people who had been like practically drooling at this point uh, sort of jumped at the, at the bit. And then there are, people, there are people like Marina Abramovich who actually do have a community. I mean, probably many of you in this room know who she is. Um, but she wanted to do this Kickstarter project because she wanted a different kind of community. She, just, she didn't want just the performance art world or the fine art world or the people who like, care about like, weird, abstract things. Um, she wanted people. She wanted just everyday people who are excited about life and culture and just living in the world to be a part of founding this institution with her. So one thing that she did during this project is she released a video with Lady Gaga um, which some people call a stunt. I think it was actually pretty great stunt. Um, and at the same time, she created this $1 tier with Lady Gaga's sort of teenage fans in mind, which was basically like pledge $1. Basically, anyone who pledges to this project is, can come to this event, and I will hug you and thank you. She's calling it the Embrace. Um, she's doing one in Europe and one in New York. And oh, just to point out, she had 1,359 backers at that level. Uh, this is like an unknown dude in Canada Again, nobody knew who he was. He'd been sort of posting in game forums, backing projects, talking to people. Um, and he launched this project on Kickstarter. 9,498 people, like what? Um, and again, this, this is someone who was really thoughtful and really generous and really like, guys, let's make this game together. Literally, so starting at the early levels, it was like you'll be thanked in the credits or you'll of course get the alpha of the game. And anyone who knows about getting the alpha of a game means that it doesn't really work really well, but you get to really be a part of the development of that game. And then starting at the higher levels, you actually get to name characters in the game. So as new colonists or new pirates or new whoever spawns in, you could decide what the name of that person or character is. Um, this is a, also a recent project. These are the guys who designed the Mars rover. Nobody knows who those people are. We all know what the Mars rover is. We know that it's like legit and amazing and life-changing, um, but no one knows who those people are. So they have this dream to make a satellite that anybody can use, right? It's not just like you know Comcast satellite or NASA satellite. It's the people satellite. So they did this project. And the way that they got people excited about this was pledge $25 and you could take a selfie from space. So they are building onto their telescope this screen and a camera that will photograph you with whatever picture that you send them. Um, 1,200 and, no, sorry, 7,208 people pledged to get a selfie from space. Uh, this is actually a live project. Uh, this is a great example of, again, these are people who behind the scenes know a lot of people, but in real life have no community whatsoever. But they know really cool people. So this is people they're friends with or they're friends of friends with, um, who they asked to submit a doodle to help them launch this school of doodle, which is a school um, that will be on the internet for teenage girls. I won't get too much into it. Um, but they asked all these women to be a part of this project. And so when the story launched, no one knew who the ladies were who were making the school, but they certainly knew who this was. So this became news. This was a way that the project traveled around the internet. Um, so that's people who come to the site with a community and make a project for their community. There's people who come to the site to build a community, to meet new people, um, to really like build an army around whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, and then there's people who come to the site uh, to do things with a community. So this is actually the first funded project ever on Kickstarter. And it was basically pledge money, as little as a dollar, and I will have a list of ideas for drawings, and you can choose one of the ideas, and I will draw it, and it will happen. The more you pledged, um, maybe you could get a copy of that drawing. 
Um, this and this project, little known project, this is actually by Yancey and Perry. This was the first project they launched on Kickstarter. And it's this beautiful idea. It was basically um, pledge 30 bucks and you get to submit an 8 by 10 image that goes into a book that would be 100 pages long. There would be 100 copies printed. And then everyone would pick it up at a party together. So this is actually, it's dark, but that's Yancey looking young and scruffy, um, holding up the book, like really delighted. He's like, this is so cool. We made this. Everyone went and they picked it up at this party. They wore a badge with their page number on it, and that was it. That was the end of the book. Uh, this is a recent project by uh, a woman named Diana Kimball who worked with us um, uh, briefly at Kickstarter and is a good friend of ours. She's now at SoundCloud. Um, it was, again, for her friends. It was for 100 of her friends. She just thought it would be fun to make a zine. She went through her computer, pulled a bunch of stuff together, designed it, and if you pledge like 10 bucks, you get a copy of it in the mail. So I love this as a story of making things for friends, making limited editions, making things just because you can and want to. Uh, and not all these are small, quirky projects. So this is a guy named Max Temkin. Um, some of you may be familiar with the game Cards Against Humanity. Uh, Max is one of the guys behind it. He decided that he would make a deck for the folk game Werewolf. That's what we call it in the States. I know it has many forms. Uh, some people call it Mafia. I'm not going to repeat what they call it in Spain. It's really uh, amazingly disgusting. Um, but uh, So he thought he'd make a deck of cards. Um, what was really cool about Werewolf, what he did here, was it was a limited edition. The only way you could get the deck was to pledge. But by pledging, you would also submit the rules that you play with. And he created an online compendium of this folk game of all these rules that have all these various mutations online. And then also solved this problem that for those of you who ever played this game, you never know what's the right ratio of werewolves to um, farmers or villagers, sorry. Uh, so he had some mathematicians actually run the numbers and figure out what is the perfect ratio of werewolves to villagers. That all of us got to find out. Uh, and this is a festival some of you may be familiar with, very similar sort of in spirit to this. This is something a guy named Andy Bio um, and another guy named Andy McMillan started, um, and very much actually in the spirit of, uh, spirit of media evolution. This was something they had a community online, a community of people who really, really like, they they were like tired of South by Southwest. They were tired of that vibe of that huge convention of, of that sponsors. Uh, um, and they wanted to do something different. And so they were all talking on Twitter all the time about this, imagining what they wanted. And so the two Andes who live in Portland were like, all right, let's do it. We're going to launch a festival. And they did it on Kickstarter. And the, only, the way to get a ticket was to pledge for the project. It was like 400 bucks, whatever the ticket price was. Uh, they sold out in like five minutes <laughs> um, because they had had that conversation. It grew from a community. And they took on the responsibility of producing it. But it was really that first 400 people um, that made it happen. Uh, and then actually last year at, at uh, XOXO, the Kickstarter crew, me included, made a book. We ran a, a three-day long project where on the first day you could pledge $10 and submit an image. This was in the spirit of Yancey's project. Um, the second day, we would collect submissions. And on the third day, at the festival itself, like in the conference, in between breaks, you would see us like feverishly printing and pressing books. And then we distributed them at the closing party. And then a uh, sort of final category here is uh, just like a fun one I wanted to throw in. It's uh, that some of the biggest projects on Kickstarter um, have been released open source or Creative Commons, um, and they've made tons of cash. So here's the story. Uh, you guys have probably, I know, have been playing with Strawbies out there. Some of you probably heard uh, Eric talking about it. This is a beautiful project. Um, they uh, made it, as Eric talks about it, for fun. They wanted to do something that was simple and easy to prototype, something they could have fun with and not like sweat too hard over. And to everyone's surprise and delay, they set a $20,000 goal and raised over $91,000 from over 1,700 people. This is a thing that you can also make yourself. You can get it, you can uh, download the files, uh, create it yourself, and yet people still want to participate. So this is the sense of community. This is that like people aren't like, oh, I could get that for free over there. People are in it for something bigger than the thing itself, right? Uh, another great example, released open hardware. This is the Neo Lucida. This is something that was meant to be a run of like 400. 
And the guys who made this, two, two artists, they launched it. And because they have an incredible community, because particularly the open hardware community is very connected to them, they launched it. And their original plan for a run of 400 vanished. Um, every time they make a new run, now in the thousands, they sell right away. The files are online. You could hack it together with stuff you find at the hardware store. And yet, um, it continues to be this incredible thing in the community. Um, Cards Against Humanity, people are always surprised at the small number, the, the small amount it raised on Kickstarter, about $15,000. Um, this was how it got its start. The reason it succeeded, this really kind of strange, cruel idea for a card game, honestly, um, was because they were distributing free PDFs. Anyone could download the jokes that they had written, even when the project was live. And basically, this was like, hey, you know those free PDFs that you love and download and play at every party? We think it'd be really cool to make a deck of cards. So either continue downloading it, here's the file, or pledge, and we'll make a deck of cards and send them to you guys, and then we can all be in it together. Um, something that otherwise would not exist, right, without the community who cared about it. Um, this is a woman named Kelly Angood. Uh, this, this is a lot of money. 35,000 pounds is a crap ton of cash. Um, and the success of this project is, I can tell you, 100% because she made a file. It's a pop-up pinhole camera that you can print on your home computer, print it out, cut it out, and assemble it yourself. It went viral on the internet because it is free, because it is fun, it is a beautiful idea. But then she wanted to make this fun silkscreen version herself. Um, and so she was like, download the free one, or you can pledge for this. Um, it was so successful that um, as the first one has been out in the world, she's been trying and iterating with the community of people who have become her passionate sort of fans and followers and learned a lot about that original design. So she recently launched, again, still live, she recently launched uh, this version two, which was designed with her community. Uh, this is a project where... More, more examples of free. You can download, it's really like a balloon on a string attached to an iPhone. Um, this is a group called Public Lab. Every time they do a project on Kickstarter, um, it is to grow their community, not to sell products. So in this case, they had 463 new balloon mappers. One of those balloon mappers became an avid member of the community and then developed this infrared camera, which they then launched a Kickstarter project for. So the, continue, the community continues to feed itself in this powerful way. Um, so Kickstarter is a place where people come to be a part of something, right? Is, I, I would hope that that's what you're taking away from this. Um, it's a place where people come to have fun um, and to be generous. I can't emphasize this enough. This is not where you come to ask for money. This is where you come to offer something and invite people to be a part of something um, and really, truly mean that. What does it mean to invite someone to be a part of something? Um, and then I don't know if you guys have this expression, uh, expression FOMO, fear of missing out, but uh, I think throwing in a little of fear of missing out, a lot of those projects I showed you were limited editions available only to backers, the people who were bringing this thing to life. So FOMO can't hurt. Thanks. It's me.